that Jesus has delivered us from the power of sickness, the power of poverty, and the power of death. And I remember when Margaret and I, we began to evangelize. So what we've got to do during this fast, we've got to claim that reward. A revival that hit America. And it was continued through fasting and prayer. I want you to turn with me in your Bibles to the book of Galatians chapter 3. Galatians chapter 3 and verse 13. And if you don't have a Bible, I want you to move over to someone who does. And I want you to read aloud this passage. And I want you to read it with me. Galatians 3.13. Would you say that please? Galatians 3.13. Let's read together. Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law... Being made a curse for us, for it is written, Cursed is every one that hangeth on a tree, that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, and that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Let's read verse 14 again. That the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, and that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Father, anoint your word with great power in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen, and you may be seated. God bless you. I grew up in the home of a pioneer preacher. I've lived above the church, below the church, in front of the church, and in back of the church. And somehow we had a poverty mentality. We felt like if you were going to be a preacher, it seemed like this was our thinking, that um, you had to drive an old car, you uh, had to wear hand-me-downs, and uh, it wasn't until I went to a school and I began to read the Bible myself that I discovered that it was not in the Bible that God will give you what you need, but not what you want. That's not in the Bible. I'd heard people preach that, but the Bible says He'll give you the desires of your heart. Amen. And so... I begin to discover that as a Christian, that we have the blessing of Abraham in our lives. Amen. That Jesus has delivered us from the power of sickness, the power of poverty, Amen. and the power of death. And I remember when Margaret and I, we began to evangelize. We uh, started out in a, a car that was a two-door car. We didn't have a spare Tire, and we went on the evangelistic work, work with $35. While we were down there, God began to bless us, and we sold that car, and I came back in a Cadillac. I never had a Cadillac in my life. It was used, but it was, uh, it was, it was ours. And then as we began to travel, I, I bought an airplane. And I remember I flew into this town that was a coal mining town. And I began to preach in this church, and there was a young man in that church whose dad was a coal miner, and he was a coal miner, and God had called him to preach. But he had this same poverty mentality that if he was going to be a preacher, he'd probably have to live in a double-wide trailer and drive an old rusty pickup truck. And I flew my plane in there. When he heard that, he said, well, a preacher's not supposed to have a plane. And I got up there and just began to preach the goodness of God and then he went home and he said, Honey, you know, we've been looking at this wrong. Maybe if we would believe that God could bless us in whatever God told us to do, that, uh, that maybe uh, it wouldn't be like we've, we thought it would be. Well, God called him to preach. He was a youth worker. Do you know the difference between a youth worker and a youth pastor? A youth worker doesn't get paid for their work. <laughs> And a youth pastor does. And Nate went into the ministry and, and he said, let's trust God for a brand new pickup truck. And they bought a new pickup truck. And then they trusted God for a new home. And God gave him a beautiful home. 
And then he said, well, if Bob Rogers can trust God for an airplane, we're going to trust God for one too. And he bought an airplane. But many times we don't realize that God wants to bless us far above what we can ever imagine or think. Now, Abraham was blessed supernaturally. It wasn't that he had such a tremendous education or he had friends and his friends helped him get to the money and the contacts for a job. The Bible says he left where he lived. He was called from Ur of the Chaldees and the Holy Spirit led him and he didn't even know where he was going. So he didn't have friends that were waiting for him, but supernaturally the power of God was upon him and he was blessed in three ways. Number one, he was blessed financially. In the book of Genesis chapter 13, it says, He was very rich. Say very rich. Very rich. Now that's where the rich people call them rich. He was very rich in cattle and in silver and in gold. And then if that wasn't enough, God says, Now I'm going to make you even more wealthy and I want you to walk through the land, through the length of it and the breadth of it and all that you see, I'm going to give to you. He had 318 warrior servants that were raised in his home, the Bible says in Genesis 14. And they went out to battle against the Iraqi kings. Now that doesn't count their wives. That doesn't count their children. That doesn't count the other servants that stayed back and watched all of the cattle and took care of business. And so we believe he had close to 2,000 servants that he was responsible for. If you could, and you can't, but if you could clothe them, feed them, take care of their medical expenses for $10 a piece a day, that would be at a cost of $20,000 a day, $600,000 a month. And he was responsible for all of this. The Bible says he was very rich. Say very rich. Very rich. Secondly, he had supernatural health. He didn't get the colds. He didn't get the flus. The fact is, God gave him a promise in Genesis 15, 15. Raise your hand. Say, I claim Genesis 15, 15 for me. Come on, say it. I claim Genesis 15, 15 for me. The Bible says, thou shall live to be a good old age. And then in Genesis chapter 25, verse 8, the Bible says, Abraham gave up the ghost and died at a good old age. His wife passed when he was 140. He remarried a 21-year-old looker by the name of Keturah. She had six more kids. Now, let me tell you, some 50-year-old, out-of-shape gal uh, can't, can't do that kind of stuff. He had, he had to marry a young one to produce the kids. He didn't have prostate problems. He didn't have... Uh, 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 a bag that he had to carry to help him go to the bathroom. He didn't have a cane. He wasn't in an old folks home. He was, he was flourishing till the day he died. Can I hear an amen? amen? So, number one, he was blessed financially. Secondly, he was blessed physically. And thirdly, he was a man of the Holy Ghost. God gave him dreams and visions. He, he prayed for kings and God healed them. He was called a healer. He prophesied. He was called a prophet. He saw into the future. He saw what was going to happen 400 years down the, the road. He talked with angels. This man was anointed supernaturally for the work of God. And the Bible says that that same blessing will come upon us in the name of the Lord, as we will seek Him, and it will come by the power of the Holy Ghost. Yes. Do you believe God can bless you with the blessing of Abraham? Yes. You look at the Jewish people today. The Jewish people today are blessed, but they're not blessed through the new covenant as we are. They're blessed through the old covenant. They're blessed as the law has been passed down. And it's very interesting as you look at the Jewish people. Actually, it's a very small group of people. Because of their success and because of their wealth, many times you think that they are much larger than what they are. But actually, of six billion people on planet Earth, the Jewish people are one-fifth of one percent. Twenty percent of one percent 
is the Jewish people. Here in the United States, they make up close to 2% of the population of America, uh, and the Jewish people are primarily in five countries. Uh, 5.9 million live in the United States, 4.6 live in, in uh, uh, Israel. Then you have France, then you have Russia, then you have the Ukraine, then you have Canada, then you have England, then you have Argentina, then you have Brazil, and on and on. Here in the United States, there's approximately seven cities that the majority of 5.9 million Jews live in. Uh, you take the states of Idaho, they have less than 500 Jewish people. Montana has even less than that. Here in, the, here in Kentucky, there's approximately 6,000 Jewish people that live here. Yet they control almost all of the media. You can't go to Viacom, you can't go to ABC, Warner Brothers, any of the big networks without meeting the controlling people is the, Jew, the Jewish population. The banks, they almost have a franchise on the banking business. They um, are people of means of the top 40 wealthiest people in America. They are 45% are Jewish. They have of... 10,400,000 millionaires and 401 billionaires, 3,400,000 are Jewish. Now, what we're talking about is an anointing that God has given to them to prosper. The Nobel Peace Prize winners here in the United States of a population of just 2%, they have 25% of the Nobel Peace Prize winners compared to the Arabic uh, uh, people have 1%. Now, to give you an idea, there was a book written, and I, I was reading that book through it, and it was called Ethnic America. It was written by an African-American writer, and he looked at the ethnic groups here in America and how they they favored economically. And the American, the average American born here, you would be at 100. And so every ethnic group was compared against that as the average American, what he made. If you were Chinese and, or uh, Italian, you were uh, 112, a little above average. German, 107. Puerto Rican, 63. A Mexican, 76. Japanese, 132. Jewish, 172 compared to 100 to the average American. Now, the reason is because of a supernatural blessing. It's a supernatural blessing. You have to understand that. People have written, well, a Jewish mind is different than a, a normal person's mind. Uh, a non a, a Gentile mind. It's, it's untrue. They have disproved all of that. And the only way they can come up with this, they come up with this and that and the other, but it is a supernatural, godly, Holy Ghost anointing that God put upon the Jews. But the Bible says that same anointing is upon us. And it's upon us through the power of the Holy Spirit. It says here that ye might receive uh, the blessing of Abraham would come upon the Gentiles through Jesus Christ and that we would receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. The promise of the Spirit is the baptism in the Holy Ghost. And so Jesus has broken the curse for us through the cross. And when you accept Jesus, that curse is broken. The curse of poverty is broken. If you're living under a curse, you need to release the blood of Jesus over your DNA. And honestly, our DNA goes back to almost 60 generations, 57 generations to be exact. And so you can stand and proclaim and speak the word and it breaks about four layers of that onion. But when you begin to release the blood of Jesus over your DNA, it goes all the way back to the, to the time of Adam. But through the power, the power to gain wealth, the power to cast out devils, the power to, to walk in health and, and with that anointing comes through the Holy Ghost. Say it comes through the Holy Ghost. Say it comes through the Holy Spirit. 
It's the baptism of the Holy Spirit that ushers that blessing of Abraham in your life. Now, people want that blessing, but they don't want to speak in tongues. They don't want to be uh, Pentecostal. They don't want to lift their hands. They don't want to, to, to pray in that prayer language of the Spirit. You know, I was listening to Fox News. And Fox News was uh, talking about Brad Pitt's mother who had spoken against abortion, had spoken against the uh, homosexual agenda, and they were talking on Fox News, well, she was out of line, but we don't need to come against Brad Pitt because of her thinking. She wasn't out of line. Who made Fox News God? Who made these reporters to set the standard? And we are embarrassed to stand up and say that's wrong, that's a sin. The Word of God is our measuring stick. The Word of God, it, it, it's settled. It's settled because what, it's what God's Word declares. Well, the people want the blessing, but they're afraid to step in to the river of the Holy Ghost. Now, the Bible's prophesied this all through the Old Testament. In the book of Isaiah, chapter 28, 11, it says, For with stammering lips and another tongue he will speak to his people. Wherewith this is the rest, where they've called the weary to rest, and this is the refreshing, but they would not enter in. That's speaking of the baptism in the Holy Spirit. That's speaking about your prayer language in the Spirit, but how there would be resistance and people don't, don't want it. Oh, that's, that was just for that time, or that was for only at one time on the day of Pentecost, and all these other ridiculous ideas. The, the, in Ezekiel chapter, uh, chapter um, 36, verse 26, it says, I will give you a heart of flesh. I will take out of you the heart of stone and put within you the heart of flesh. It was talking what took place on the day of Pentecost. And God made you a new creation in Christ Jesus. And God anointed you with the power of the Holy Spirit. In the book of Luke, chapter uh, 24, about verse 48 and verse 49, Jesus talked and He says, Go tarry in the city of Jerusalem and ye will receive the promise of the Father. Now the promise of the Father is not Jesus. Jesus was not the promise of the Father. Jesus spoke about the promise of the Father and that was the baptism in the Holy Ghost. Because it's the baptism of the Holy Spirit that brings in all that blessing and the power, the power to make wealth, the power to be healthy, the power to be a witness for Christ. In the book of Acts 1.8. Somebody say Acts 1.8 and wave your hand when you do that. <laughs> Acts 1.8 says, And ye shall receive power. After that the Holy Ghost comes upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me. First in Jerusalem, then in Judea, then in Samaria, and then in the uttermost parts of the earth. Ye shall be witnesses. Brother Bob, what I like to witness is everybody just look at me. They want to be like me. And I'm witnessing through my life. There you drive an old beat up car that you have to lay hands on every day just to get it started. You, 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 you can't pay your bills. They're out here cutting off your electric and everybody wants to be like you. They don't want to be like you. They, they want to be like Bill Gates. They, they, they want to be like the guy who lives in that nice house and drives that big car. Now, now, I believe you ought to speak and you ought to testify and you ought to witness. But if you're not going to testify, at least be rich so you can drive a nice car and live in a nice house. So people say, well, man, I, I want to be like them. They're Christians. Come on, if, you, if you're not going to drive it and, and, and flaunt it, as a, as a, then you're going to have to get out there and preach on the sidewalk every day. How many know what I'm talking about? I believe it is a witness to prosper. I believe it is a witness to, to, to wear nice clothes, to pay your bills on time, to go in and, and uh, have your needs met, and that uh, God's taken good care of you. How many believe that as a good witness in the name of Jesus? 
What we're, we're, we're talking about is through the power of the Holy Spirit, God has given us an ability to preach the gospel. Hallelujah. Now, there are five secrets of prosperity through the Holy Spirit. I want you to jot these down. I want you to jot them down on a piece of paper. If you don't have any paper, just write them on your hand. But uh, I, I, want you to, I want you to get this in your spirit. The first law of prosperity is that you must know it's God's will that you prosper. Listen, let's, let's look at the father of our faith. Our father of our faith was Abraham. It was Isaac. And it was Jacob. Were those guys on welfare? Were those guys hitchhiking to try to get around? There wasn't any thoughts in their mind that God didn't want them to be blessed and prosperous and successful in the name of the Lord. They were all prosperous. They were all blessed. There was never a theology of poverty. But it was a theology that God has put us here. We're the kings of the earth. Our very presence our very, uh, us coming into a land, we need to be decision makers. We need to be in positions where we influence our community that we're a part of. That was the whole theology and mentality of the people that you read about in the Bible. Now, if you have a mentality of poverty... If I get up here and you say, Pastor Bob is one of those prosperity preachers, and you have that kind of thinking, and you are, are undercutting this, then God can't bless you because you would be under condemnation. You would feel guilty if God blessed you. And the Bible says there is therefore no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus. So if God blessed you, you would feel guilty about it. And God's not going to put you on a guilt trip. So you lock the door where you could never be blessed of God. And the Jewish people have never had that kind of crazy thinking. That's produced by, by religion. That's what it does. But if we don't have money, we'll never be able to proclaim the gospel the way God would have us to do it here in the last days. Number two, they are, are people who heard the voice of God. I mean, here in Genesis 13, Abram was already rich. And then God spoke to him, said, now I'm going to really get the money in your hands. I want you to walk through this land. And I want you to look at the real estate. You're going into the real estate business. He heard the voice of God. Then in the 26th chapter of Genesis, it, the Bible says there was a famine in the land. What does that mean? There's a recession. It's a picture of us right here in the United States. And God spoke to him and says, Isaac, you're not to go down to Egypt, but as I blessed your father, Abraham, I'm going to bless you. I'm going to give you the land to the east, to the west, to the north, and to the south. And the Bible says that Isaac sold in the land and in the same year reaped a hundredfold, for God was with him. The fact is he became so wealthy, the king came to him and said, listen, you're stronger, bigger, uh, more wealthy than we are. Every time we drive by your house, we feel bad. And w would, would you mind moving out of here? You know, isn't that something? Please move out of our neighborhood. You embarrass us because you have so much. And then Isaac, Isaac was fleeing from his brother and he saw a ladder going up to heaven and the angels were ascending and descending and God spoke to him and said, all this that I promised your father Abraham and Isaac, I'm going to fulfill in your life. And he made a vow unto God. These men had the ability to hear from God. Now, if you're going to prosper supernaturally, if you're not going to prosper supernaturally, you have to go on everything that you can do. It's your education, your opportunities, how the economy's doing, how the wind's blowing. And if it's a bad wind, if the economy drops, you're in trouble. But if you're walking in the power of the Holy Spirit, it doesn't matter. The Holy Spirit can, can bless you when it's up and He can bless you when it's down. Right. But you have to hear the voice of God and this is why you need the baptism in the Holy Ghost. 
This is why you need to pray in your prayer language. As you're praying in the Holy Ghost and you're speaking in tongues, the Bible says, what is it? I will pray in the Spirit and I will pray in the understanding also. So you're praying in the Spirit and then you start praying in English and you're listening to yourself talk. I, I remember I was, we, we were trying to get this radio station. Right now, I invite you to stop whatever you're doing and join with us as we pray. Behind us at the prayer wall, the wailing wall, so many people have come and they're praying. There's literally hundreds of thousands of prayer needs that are stuck into the cracks that have been brought here from people all over the world. Many years ago, there was a, a young man who ran away from home and he didn't contact his family, his parents. He hadn't seen them for, for many, many years. And he was in India and he found out that his mom and dad had both died. And so through that, he came to Christ. He came over here to Israel and he went down to this wall behind me. And there while he was praying, he said, God, I don't know how I could ever uh, make things right with my parents. While he was there, he looked and there was a prayer need that was coming out of the wall. He, he pulled it out and it was a prayer request and it was there by his dad. And it said, son, I've come here to pray for you and somehow I don't know how to get a hold of you, but I've come here all the way and they lived in Cleveland. He said, I've come here from Cleveland. And I'm putting this prayer need because I believe somehow this message will get to you that I love you and forgive you. It was a tremendous story. It's a true story, but it's the miracles of God. Right now, I want to pray for you that God's miracles will come to you. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I break every power of evil that would come to kill, to steal, and to destroy. And I release miracles into this home in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to send to you some anointing oil that we've brought back from Israel. And for the next 30 days, I'm going to ask you to anoint yourself every day. And you get up in the morning, anoint yourself, anoint your family, anoint your, anoint your money, anoint your automobile, your car, anoint your home. And I believe that God can bring peace in your life and blessings in your life. And I, I want to send it to you for any generous gift. Your generous gifts will help us at the City of Hope. It will help us to bring hope and help to many young men who've lost their way. The information there on how you can order it is right there on the screen. So I encourage you to call us now or, or go to the email and, and uh, get a hold of us and we'll be glad to send it to you. God bless you and thanks for viewing today on Word Alive. We've got to claim that reward. A revival that hit America. And it was continued through fasting and prayer.